functional and well-organized sewing room is the key to having a productive and creative sewing time. So in this video, I would love to share with you eight tips that actually help me to transform my sewing space into a functional sewing room where I can easily create beautiful things on a daily basis. So without further ado, let's get started. First tip to use as much vertical space as possible is great for those who have either a very small sewing space, for example, a small little corner, or for those who use their sewing room for multiple purposes like I do. So this room is not only my sewing room, but I also conduct my conference calls for work from this room. I film YouTube videos as well. And I also do my watercolors and my acrylics uh, and all my arts and crafts in here as well. So pegboard is a great solution for storing your tools and I know a lot of you already use pegboards. I got this one at Home Depot and it came in gray color and all I did was just I bought a can of uh, white spray paint and I spray painted it white and then these little baskets I actually got at a dollar store for a dollar and I think there were four in a pack. Great solution, super easy, super cheap and organizes your stuff in a vertical space. Another thing to consider when I say use your vertical space is instead of building flat, build up and that includes considering some storage solutions like shelving or actually buying a bookshelf where you can store your sewing books or maybe your sewing patterns or use it for a fabric storage. You can also buy some just a garage storing solutions like a metro shelf that will help as well. And here's another little tip that also goes in this category. Instead of combining your tables in a big square to use it as a cutting table, push them against the walls where your natural light source falls so that way whenever you're sewing you have a natural light source from the window if you have one and use your floor to cut and assemble your patterns because what I realized is having a big square in the middle doesn't really help me that much at least in my situation so I do assembly and uh, gluing and, and taping all of my patterns and cutting them out on the floor that also gives me some space I, as you guys know, I have a little baby. That gives me some space to put her bassinet here inside if I do need to have her in my art room for whatever reason. And it also provides me enough space to put these lights for YouTube videos and to clear this space if I'm having my conference call. Labeling things for convenience will save you a ton of frustration, especially if you have a huge fabric stash, which I know a lot of you do, and so do I, and you store your fabric in a plastic bin, adding a little label might help you remember where, where did the fabric go, right? Or if you store your sewing tools in a container that you cannot see through, adding a little label will help you find what you're looking for a little bit faster. Also distinguishing between, is it a serger foot pedal or is it a sewing machine foot pedal? That helps as well. And those Labels don't need to be anything fancy. You don't have to buy a P-Touch to make, to make those little labels. Just a little post-it note and a little bit of scotch tape will do the job. Since we're talking about fabric, and fabric is everybody's favorite subject, I actually found out that storing mine on the hangers in the closet saves me a lot of time, a lot of space, and a lot of frustration. I usually store my chiffons, my cottons, and my lighter knits on the hangers, and then my heavier fabrics, for example, winter fabrics, in the plastic bin, just like I mentioned before. And this solution might not work for you, but if you do have a built-in closet in your sewing space, um, you might want to give it a try, or you can also order a, a organizing rack from Ikea and you can put your hangers um, on there as well. So the reason why it works so well is because chiffons usually are so slippery and I have found out that it frustrates me so much if I have them a really nice neat stack and then I need that one right there in the middle and I you know and I and then if you pull it out everything just slides off and then if you you know if you try to do it neatly it just takes so much time to put it all back together and then when they're all neatly on the racks I can just go through them and browse through them and choose the one that I'm really looking for. Let's talk about how to store your patterns. Storing sewing patterns can be a little bit problematic, especially when you have a lot of printed out patterns. So here are four easy storage solutions that I found really work for me. So first of all, you can buy these yellow envelopes from Dollar Store. And usually what I do is I tape either pattern layout or the pattern picture um, on, on the front of it. And then inside you will have all of your pattern pieces. And it's a really nice and neat way how to store your sewing patterns. Another super Super easy budget friendly way how to store your sewing patterns is to buy these clear envelope pouches that you would usually use for putting in folders and it's a really easy solution you can buy these at Walmart or Staples and you can buy them by the hundred in a big pack the same principle works here you'll put a 
um, a, a piece of paper that describes what the pattern is. You can print the picture or just write what that is. And inside you will have all of your pattern pieces. It's great to use these because you can see through all of the pattern pieces that are inside. However, they're maybe not as sturdy as the yellow envelopes would be. Here's another uh, budget-friendly solution that I know a lot of you have mentioned in the comments is that uh, to use uh, Ziploc bags. You can also buy these at Dollar Store. These are definitely not as sturdy, not, not even as sturdy as the uh, um, envelope or the clear patches over here or the envelopes, but um, still, you know, great, a great way how to do that. Besides, you can use them in the kitchen and you can use them in your art room. And another super budget-friendly solution is just to use these little shopping bags that you can probably get uh, when you shop for cosmetics or any other little things and um, you can't really see through but the same principle goes here you put the name of the pattern up front and you can either opt for cutting off the handle so that all of them are kind of uniform or you can just leave it as is and that way you can store your patterns super nice and easy um, definitely neat, neat, neatly enough um, and so that way if you need a certain pattern you can just glance at the front of the of the of the either bag or a pouch and determine whether that is the pattern that you that you looking for or not. Here's a little tip on how to make these pretty cardboard boxes for storing your magazines, or your sewing magazines like I do with my Berta style magazines because storing them on a shelf can take a lot of space and I'd rather put them in the box where I can easily see what do I have inside and maybe use it as a decoration as well. So this is just actual regular cardboard box from Amazon or any other online shopping place that I got years ago and this is actually just a cheap contact paper from dollar store literally this contact paper cost me a dollar in a roll and I actually had a little bit of leftovers and I think I wrapped one of the gift boxes in it as well and all I did is just apply it to the box tape in the uh, the ends on the inside and tada I have a pretty box that will store either your um, UFO projects uh, from your sewing either maybe some of the sewing remnants um, maybe some of the quilts that you are working on or magazines just like I do Here's a quick one, store like with like items together, especially if you have a lot of stuff and if your sewing room serves a lot of purposes just like mine. So for me, it's super important to make sure that all of my sewing stuff is on one side, all of my crafty stuff is organized together and all of my work related stuff is on my work desk. And if your sewing room is just sewing dedicated, then store all of your fabric together, store all of your thread together, store all of your sewing notions together as well. That will help you finding that one tool that you maybe misplaced or maybe you're looking for so much easier and so much more efficient. This is a great DIY storage solution for those who love budget-friendly options. These are actually made out of water jugs or milk jugs and I have a super quick video that shows you how to cut these apart to create this little storage container and I will link that video in the info box below so definitely go ahead and check it out. And I use these for various uh, various things. For example, here I'm storing little fabric scraps that I cannot use for anything else but I uh, collect them and I use them for stuffing animal toys or anything like that. And then this one, I use this one for collecting my sewing supplies. Like for example, I have some pins, some scissors, some fabric for the current project that I'm working on. Or a lot of times I will actually use these for my crafting tools. For example, I'll, I'll gather some markers in it. I'll store some acrylic paints for the project that I'm currently working on. Or if I need to tidy up my sewing room for whatever reason and I cannot leave my project that I'm currently working on on the table, I will gather all my supplies in this little organizational basket. I'll put my sewing project in there so the next time when I'm ready to sew, I can just grab this little thing and I can get started on my sewing project right away. Having things that serve multiple purposes is another great way to have a functional sewing room. And here are a few super quick and easy examples of how to do that. So as you know, this is my YouTube video background, but I actually do use this cubby for my craft supply storage. I store my acrylics, my fabric dyes, stamps, 
scotch tape. My fabrics will go in there. As you already know, this is the box where I store my Border Style magazines, my dress form that I actually use, my patterns, my sewing books, and everything else. The floor, when I'm not filming, these lights are pushed aside and I use it to cut my fabric or to assemble my paper patterns. This is also where my baby's bassinet will go if I need to have her in here for any reason. I also do not own any ironing board. This is where I actually press and iron all of my seams and details. I use this little corner to press smaller seams and smaller garments and if I need a lot more space I will lay out this cotton fabric that has batting underneath and I will push this sewing machine aside to create as much space as I need. This also saves me some time and some space and a hassle of taking ironing board every single time and I know it might not work for everybody but that's what works for me and the solutions that I have for this space. And that is it for us today. Definitely give this video a thumbs up if you think that these tips will come in handy in organizing and making your sewing room a lot more functional. Definitely check out these other videos that you see on your screen right now. Sew up a store, make something beautiful, and until next time, happy sewing. Bye!